Hey guys, what's up? It's Jenny. Welcome back to another video on the channel. Um, please excuse my bangs. I know they look crazy. I'm trying to grow them out. I don't really know how to style them right now because they're too short to really push back very well. Also, I'm really tired, so no makeup. I did put on some fun new lip gloss I got, but this is this is what you're getting today. So today's video, we are gonna do part two of my Living with CHD series. Um, last time we did stuff directed towards patients, questions we get as patients, comments we get. Today is some questions um, I've gotten from parents of patients with CHD, and so I wanted to try and address those. I did also, I just talked to my mom and dad, um, and I got some of their thoughts on it as well, because some of these things um, mainly affected me, I guess, when I was a kid, and so stuff I don't necessarily remember, or I don't have maybe the best advice for. Um, it will say also, sorry, I'm running a timer. I don't know if it's working. Um, I only have 20 minutes till my camera cuts off, so hopefully I can do that quick enough. Um, it will also say that I lost my train of thought, so, oh, I'm not a medical professional. These are purely my experiences, my thoughts, as well as some from my parents, so none of this is to be taken as medical advice. Um, and again, this is all particular to my situation and how it was for me growing up. That doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work for you or for your child, for your partner, if you're a spouse or a partner of someone who has CHD. These are purely my experiences and I'm just sharing those with you. Maybe they offer some help or advice for your particular situation. So let's just go ahead and get into the video. Uh, we have three different topics I was going to try and talk about. Um, they're all kind of large, so I'm going to try and hopefully make each of them somewhat brief. Uh, I'll do my best. So the first one I got a question about was health insurance. Just, it seems like a broad general question about it. Um, as an adult with CHD, there's a lot of things to think about within that. Um, what can you afford? What monthly premiums do you want? Uh, high deductible, low deductible, all that kind of stuff. So. In regards to that as an adult patient, I'm actually gonna leave a link down below. Um, I'm really excited I was able to help write this document um, with the Adult Congenital Heart Association, me and another patient as well as a provider from um, a specific hospital um, wrote this document and it's about just general facts when thinking about insurance options and um, kind of figuring out how to choose what's gonna work best for you. So. I'm going to leave that document down below. Please feel free to check it out, even if you're a parent of someone with CHD. I think it can be extremely beneficial um, helping figure out a plan that's going to work best for you and your family. Um, there are a couple of things I guess I kind of want to talk about that seemed, um, not seemed that affected me, I guess, as a kid. Um, I talked to my parents and this is just kind of their particular situation, what they had to deal with within it. Um, and I think some of it could still be relevant even now. I know healthcare system has obviously changed quite a bit since like the 80s and 90s, um, and so I have options. But I think some of these can still be relevant. Um, the biggest thing I know my mom was talking about was as far as when switching plans. So say you work for you know whatever company you work for and you happen to get your health insurance through them, sometimes they will change health insurance companies and I know she was saying back then there were some times when switching plans they would have to keep me on the old one before transitioning me onto their new plan because the new one had a pre-existing clause on it so something to keep in mind I think nowadays that clause is not necessarily there anymore but that may vary um, so just keep that in mind um, when choosing a new health insurance if it is switching um, also know every state may have different coverage options. Um, I've heard some patients who, if they live in Kentucky, like for their kids, they're able to get them on Medicaid for it. Whereas in Tennessee, or at least with my experience, my parents said they weren't offered anything like that for me. So um, every state can have different options as far as what's available. Um, again, that may just be something that's changed because it's, you know, a good 20, 30 years later um, than, you know, it is now. So 
Um, keep that in mind. Always look and see what's available where you live. Um, oh, okay. My dad was saying one thing that was really major as far as um, even just choosing a job is he was able to see what their insurance coverage was going to be um, as he was in interviewing. Um, and he could see what their lifetime caps were for the coverage. And that highly affected his decision on whether or not to take the job because there were some places where the lifetime cap was half a million which would be very cautious taking that because um you know you have one surgery nowadays that's like 200 to 300 thousand dollars you're gonna max out in like five years um and then you know thankfully he was able to get on a place he interviewed at the same place three times they finally on the third time had changed their coverage to where there was no lifetime cap. And by then he was like, okay, uh, this place is gonna work for me and my family, so let's do it. So something to be mindful of whenever, um, you know, interviewing for jobs and that kind of stuff, if that's something you're um, looking for is the insurance coverage. Um, he also even said like, I guess for um, people with infants with CHD, um, Again, I don't know about here in Ohio, but I know he said um, for them, the Shriners, I guess the hospital was able to give them that information. The Shriners even came out to their house to see if they needed help. Uh, mended hearts came out. Back then, they didn't have mended little hearts um, or PCHA or any of that. So um, it was mended hearts, and both those organizations offered assistance because they knew how expensive care could be. So there's a lot of really great organizations that can also um assist you when it comes to financial aspects of, of taking care of yourself or a kid with CHD. All right, second topic. Um, let's do transition of care. So this is a major topic. Um, and I think it's something that nowadays is becoming more and more prevalent um, as far as being talked about within the doctor's office. Um, I talked to my mom about this because for me, I don't remember doing a whole lot of transition of care. I do remember, I, thankfully, I had a pediatric cardiologist and within that same office, they had the adult congenital heart specialist. So it was a very seamless transition maybe, which is why I don't remember it being like a big deal. I don't honestly remember a whole lot of them talking to me about stuff. But my mom said they definitely did. So who knows? Maybe I just it was like a traumatic thing and I blocked a lot of it out. There's so many things she was saying that I was afraid of that I like, I don't even remember. Like she's talking about white coats, like doctors wearing white coats. Like I hated it as a kid and they called it like the white coat syndrome. I don't remember any of this. So, um, I digress, but I think it's extremely important as far as transition of care. Once your kids hit even teenage age or preteen, um, go ahead and involve them in the conversation at the doctor's office. I think this is only going to make their life easier once they hit their late teens, um, go off to college, or just when they're, in, you know, becoming more of an adult and they're taking care of themselves. Knowing what their defect is, knowing what medications they take, um, knowing about health insurance, all of this is going to be so helpful and it's going to make their lives so much easier and a little bit less stressful. Um, for me, I literally just knew I had something called pulmonary atresia and I had a hole in my heart. I didn't know anything else. Um, not to say that someone didn't tell me that, I guess, but I think they were always so focused on, let's just get me healthy, let's get me good, and let's leave the office. Um, and I just don't remember a whole lot being told to me, but again, that doesn't mean they didn't. I obviously just blocked out a lot of it because I feel like it was maybe some tra traumatic situations for me. Um, so when I had moved after I, um, I moved to North Carolina when I was about 23 and my cardiologist there was like, oh, so you have this, this thing. And I was like, excuse me, like, I didn't even know the names of some of my defects. And that was a major shock for me. Um, I, I felt so like lost. I was like, what, what, what do I have? What's going on? So please help your kids not go through that um, and just educate them. And you can do it a little by little. My mom did say they were really good about doing a little by little. Um, so each visit, they would kind of go over one thing and then next year go over a little bit more. Um, and also, I know they were trying to educate themselves on the whole situation. If they've never been through this, they don't know a whole lot of medical history as far as that kind of stuff. 
you're just trying to learn yourself. So as parents, I'm sure this is a major education situation for you too. Um, just make sure and involve your kids in that. Um, obviously you don't want to do too much too fast because you don't want to freak them out, but a little by little, um, maybe have them on, having them around other kids with CHD can really help. So that way they feel less alone. There's other people just like them. They can learn from each other. I think that could be extremely beneficial. Um, okay. The third topic. And now this one, um, Thank goodness I got about 10 minutes left because this might be one of the bigger ones. Um, I got asked about the process of pregnancy and decision making whether or not to get pregnant. Um, my mom said as a baby, my cardiologist told her, no, she cannot have kids. Like it's way too dangerous. It's not an option. Um, and then I asked her like, you know, as I got older, do they really change their stance on that or did it stay? And she's like, they never really said anything different. So she kind of always assumed don't. <laughs> um, and then when I did get to the age of, you know, needing my own gynecologist and that kind of thing, gynecologist was like, you know, I spoke to your cardiologist. It seems like something you could do if you want to, we just have to be really monitoring you. <laughs> and my mom was like, we freaked out. We really didn't want that because honestly, we were always just focused on what maybe the next surgery was and keeping you alive. And we didn't want to add pregnancy into that. So it's always kind of been a fear for them, which I totally get. I mean, goodness, I went through so much and they went through so much. So I know the idea of throwing pregnancy into that is so scary. So, so scary. Um, and so as I, and I just always thought I can't get pregnant as a kid, like I was fine. I was absolutely honestly scared of it because I think my parents were scared. And so I felt that fear and I was like, well, no, that's fine. I don't need it. <laughs> and once I got into my twenties, um, and my husband and I got married and then we talked to the cardiologist then they were like, well, you know, obviously technology has changed a lot since then. So has the growth of information. We know a lot more now. Um, and they're like, well, it is an option. It is definitely high risk. Um, even within a high risk grouping, you're definitely on the medium to higher risk, but it, we can do it. And so um, we kind of took some time. We decided if it was something we want or not. After a few years, we decided let's try. Um, and my car just was nervous because some of my tests weren't like the best, but he's like, it, I think it could be okay. <laughs> so which that's encouraging, <laughs> but so we did try for a little while and nothing was really working. Um, and then we even went through fertility treatments. We could only do so much with my particular heart condition. Um, but we gave it a go and none of that was really taking either. Um, turns out I also have some gynecological issues that um, are preventing stuff. So I think in the end it's worked out because now I'm definitely in a place where I physically can't even imagine getting pregnant or even if we adopted, I know adoption, surrogacy, all those kind of things can be an option for people. I don't know if I would even get approved for adoption um, with my <laughs> current health status. Um, but even if we did, I, I just don't know that I have the energy. So I think pregnancy, it's a very specific decision to each um, person. So depending on what their health conditions are. I also have some other like comorbidities, some other health conditions that affect our decision um, to not. And I think every every person's um, situation is gonna be different. So you just kind of have to look into definitely having the conversation with the cardiologist. Um, and be mindful that it may change from the time they're a kid to they're an adult, or it may not. It may stay the same depending on what their particular defect is and that kind of thing. So, but always, always please talk to your cardiologist, um, have them run any specific tests they might think are going to be important for making that decision. Um, and, and then just take it from there. Um, everybody's different. I mean, even everybody within the same defects are going to be completely different. So you just kind of have to be mindful of that. Um, it is obviously a major decision. Um, just for me and for Craig, we decided it's a little more risk than we're currently willing. And also just because of my current state, energy levels and that kind of stuff, I don't feel comfortable bringing a kid into the household. Like I, I just don't think I could do it. Um, and 
not to be morbid or anything you know we never know how long we're gonna live with CHD and I mean I could live to be 70 that would be incredible or I could maybe live another 10 years we never know I try not to think negatively I always just try to focus on taking it day by day but I don't given that I don't feel comfortable with the idea of me particularly raising a kid not knowing how long I'm gonna live you know um, Again, I know that's very morbid and dark, and I'm sorry, but it is also very realistic, I think, because, I, I don't know, I just like to be honest and open about that. Um, everybody's different. I have a friend who had a child last year, and she's doing amazing. Um, she has CHD, and, oh my gosh, the little baby is the most adorable thing ever, and they're both doing great. So, just because this is what I'm doing for me doesn't mean you or if you have a kid with CHD, it doesn't mean that that's going to be their particular situation. Um, so it's a lot to think about, a lot to discuss with your doctor, a lot to discuss um, if you're already married with somebody um, as a CHD or a lot to discuss with your partner. Um, if you're a parent, that could be a really hard conversation. I honestly don't necessarily remember how much my parents told me. I just remember in their doctor's office that kind of be a discussion that let's get you on birth control. It's extremely important to be on birth control kind of thing. So from that, I got that being pregnant would be very bad for me. Um, and also I will say birth control, definitely talk to a cardiologist about that. What's going to work best for you as far as your defect. Um, I know at least for me, for my, anything with estrogen is not recommended. So I would definitely, if you're going to a gynecologist, also make sure you're talking to your cardiologist to see what they would recommend and what's going to be best because some things don't play well with others. So please be mindful of that. Um, I have a few minutes left. I have one other topic I didn't have on my list, but I wanted to talk about, and that's mental health. Um, I highly recommend as if you're a parent with a kid with CHD, please be mindful of mental health within them and with yourself too. I can imagine what it's like to go through this as a parent, but I know that's got to be hard mentally. <laughs> so take care of yourself. Also with your kids, I don't think it would hurt to maybe have them see a therapist. They might tell you they're fine and whatever, but that just could be them not really wanting to talk to you. It doesn't mean they don't need to talk to someone else because um, it's a lot, especially if you're someone that has to go to the doctor's office often or if you have surgeries during like your school age years, that is extremely difficult to go through. And to do that alone is maybe not the healthiest either, especially if you, you know, don't necessarily talk to people about it. So um, mental health is so, so important. Please take care of each other for that. Um, it's only gonna help you as an adult. Once the kid gets to be an adult age, um, that was redundant, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. That's kind of what I wanted to say about that. So I think this was an awesome video. I enjoyed it. Um, please leave comments down below. Any questions? It's, just give me a thumbs up saying you like this. I am. I don't know if I'll do another video in this series. I might. We'll just see kind of what pops up. Um, but it is officially Heart Week, so I really wanted to get this out, get this done. Um, and yeah, I'm excited. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate all the support. Um, anyone who shared this video and the previous one. I really appreciate it. Um, hopefully it helps you guys, give you some sense of you're not alone, you can do this. And yeah, so thank you guys so much and I hope you have a wonderful day. See you next time. Bye.